All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and download the preset and the raw image file from last week's video. I walked you through how I shot this image, and now this week we're gonna edit it. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography, and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And like I have mentioned, what we are doing here today is we are taking that raw image file that we captured in last week's video with the cheap camera, right? It was $200 camera, did a great job, show you how I shaped the light. And so now this week, I'm gonna show you how I applied some edits in Lightroom in order to just make it more dramatic, to really capture the energy I was going for, and hopefully introduce you to some new tools. Now, just as a heads up, I'm not gonna go super in depth on each of the tools that I'm using and how they're unique and how they work, things like that. I mean, you'll be able to see the changes and how they're impacted in the image. But if you're looking for more in depth tutorials on Lightroom, I've got a playlist down below, so be sure to check that out. But let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom. All right, so here we are in the develop module and usually the very first thing that I'll do before I go too far is I go ahead down into looking for the lens corrections and I enable the profile corrections. So of course it's finding that I was shooting with that 18 to 55 millimeter lens and you can see that it's just fixed a little bit of the distortion because I was shooting in that at 18 millimeter. So just kind of tighten that up a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crop this image. There are a lot of people who will say, you know, you should wait to crop until the end. But for this particular image, because I'm cropping so significantly, I kind of just wanna see only what I'm working with. I feel like all this background is going to be distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and crop this and I intended it to be created at four Instagram. So the four by five, and then we can go ahead and shimmy into that position so that we get that really cool, like symmetry going on that we had before. There we go. That looks about right. Adjust it over a little bit just so that I kind of eliminate that corner. There we go, that looks just about right. All right, so now jumping in over to the right panel here, the white balance looks pretty correct here. Um, I believe I shot it in auto white balance and I was shooting with daylight, so that looks great. So now jumping further into the basics panel, I usually will wait to do anything with exposure and contrast until I've done more of the edit. So at this point though, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna boost the whites, uh, just cause I really wanna bring out just the brighter tones in the image. Bring that up to at about a 31 here. There we go. And then the blacks, I also like to just kind of alleviate a little bit of the contrast and lift the blacks a little bit. So I'm gonna take those up to plus 28. So, so far we can just do a little before and a little after. We can see that that lens correction, of course, has taken place, but we've also just brightened up the overall image because it was a little it was a little dark and underexposed, which we can see up here in the histogram. We're really lacking some of those brighter tones, which we're gonna fix in just a moment here. So now going further down, I do like to add some texture, very frequently like to do this. This was a new addition in the last year to Lightroom. And so bringing this up, and you can see, you know, we don't want to go too far on this so that it starts to look like crocodile skin, but we definitely want some really f to monopolize on that really cool texture that we've got going on. And similarly with clarity, I honestly don't use a ton of clarity when I edit photos, but in this case, because there's so much texture going on here that I wanna be more creative with it. So I am gonna take it a little further, and I did take it a little further than I usually do. So this is one of those areas because it really affects the mid-tones in the image, can kind of make it look a little muddy. So just be careful with the clarity, but it can be a definitely a cool tool. So if we go back again before and after, you can see adding that texture and clarity is really cinch things up. I mean, if we just take it back down and take it up and you can just see how that really helps to define things for this particular image. And as we've talked about before, each individual image is unique and different. That's why applying one preset to all your photos may not necessarily have the desired impact, especially if there's like a lot of clarity in this particular image that we want to bump up, but then you take it to another image and it just looks like crap. So that's why it's really helpful to understand all these tools, even if you're going to use presets that you know how the tools affect these different edits. 
And then the next tool is the dehaze, which I've honestly started using with a heavier hand recently uh, because I do shoot in an environment where there's a lot of light kind of bouncing around. I shoot in an area with white walls so I can end up with a little bit of haze. I really like the impact that dehaze has on the images just to really accentuate those shadows in a very unique way. So now at this point, I'm gonna leave the vibrance and saturation alone. We're gonna play with colors here in a moment, but I'm gonna jump down into the tone curve and I am gonna go ahead and close up those little guys and I'm gonna manually manipulate the tone curve here. First of all, I just want kind of like a more faded feel going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the blacks right here. That's just gonna elevate it, turn those blacks more into dark grays. So it gives you kind of that more worn sort of vintagey feeling, which made sense for me just in terms of like something from the garden, there's a certain earthiness to it. And so then I do though wanna create a little bit more contrast in this image. And so by placing another dot right here along the line, and then pulling that down, just kind of anchor those darker tones. You can see we're really adding some contrast, but it is also bringing down those brighter tones, which we definitely want to make sure are still there. So placing another dot in the lighter area and bringing those up. Ooh, and we end up with some nice, look at how this is really doing a great job. So this is where we've seen kind of the biggest impact, I think, so far in the edit. If we do the before and the after, we're really making some progress here. And so then I open up this additional little area underneath the tone curve just to affect some even further edits in this area. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the lights up. This is where I think you can find a lot of punch and brightness. I find that if I'm shooting with an image and I really want those brights to just like scream out and be electric, you know, playing with this area of the lights really can help do that. So I'm gonna bring those brights up to 26 there we go and then also bringing the darks up though because now it's kind of gotten a little more contrasty than i want so i'm going to take it up to about 13. okay we're looking good we've got a lot of good texture going on uh, we can really see each of the leaves there's a lot of definition we can see those different kinds of leaves loving it so next we come into the colors and I only impacted one color because there's really only one color. I mean, there's definitely some yellows going on here, maybe some teals going on here, but the predominant color of course is green. We've got a monochromatic palette here. So in terms of the greens, we've got hue, saturation, and luminance. So for the hue, you know, looking at the current hue of green, I mean, it's very like vibrant, lively, energetic green. I kind of want to make this a little richer and a little more rustic, right? So in that case, I'm going to take, because the yellows add a lot of like liveliness to it, whereas blues make it kind of a little more contemplative, a little bit more moody. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the hue just a little bit, 12 points, toward the blues so that that just adds that little bit of depth in there but now it's kind of looking a little unnatural so the way to recover that then is to come into the saturation and dial back that saturation so i'm going to take that down pretty far again i took the edit in this particular situation a lot further than i usually do because i was trying to be dramatic trying to have fun with it um, but now you can see by taking down that saturation how that really helped to counterbalance that change in the color and i I think it added a, a good bit of richness here. So if we again go back to our before and our after, you know, we've got some nuanced changes, but it's starting to make a big impact here. All right, so now we're gonna go into split toning, which is where we're gonna take the colors and modify them even further. If you're not familiar with split toning and how this works or what it's really doing, I've got a video all about it linked down below. But in this case, I just wanna impact the shadows. I wanna leave the highlight areas the color that they are, but I just wanna further add some like cool vibiness, some of those blues into the shadows. And so in this case, we are gonna go ahead and take the hue of the shadows and turn that to 238. So that's gonna rest right in that little bluish, purplish area, you can see, but it hasn't impacted anything in the image yet because we haven't pumped up the saturation yet, right? So if we take the saturation, if we take it way far up, whoa, turns our whole image blue. But if we just dial it into at about 19, it's definitely adding some cool factor in there. Uh, but because we haven't impacted the highlights at all, we've got this nice little balance. And to me, this is like how I think of kale from a color standpoint. Like maybe it is a vibrant green or maybe that's the way it read on camera. But when I think about kale, like it's that richer, deeper, bluer green. And so that definitely captures that here. 
All right, so now we go into the detail. We're gonna add some sharpening. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of keep it at around 38. And then we're just gonna take the masking up to our, my happy place is generally around 75. If we hold down that option key, we can kind of see where exactly that's sharpening. It's not sharpening the entire image, it's just sharpening kind of those main lines in the image. So you can go based on your comfort level, but that's what I applied here. So we are getting pretty darn close. If we do a before and we do an after, looking good, looking good. But now there's one additional edit that I want to apply just to really like bring that whole dark and moody vibe home. And so I'm going to use a radial filter. I've got a whole video about radial filters. If you haven't watched it, you can go grab that one. But I'm going to go ahead and drag the radial filter out here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and X out all of the settings on that so we can start from fresh. I'm just gonna bring it down here in the lower corner here because I wanna kinda kill some of the brighter tones up here on this edge. I really wanna drive the eyeball sort of into this center area, into this area of symmetry. So I can just show the selected mask overlay so you get an idea of where I'm putting it. Whatever's red, or whatever's pink is where the edits are gonna fall. But I'm gonna go ahead and take that exposure and dial it down just a skosh here so we can see at negative 0.95, oh, too far, 95 is where I ended up with it. <laughs> here, I'll just type it in. <laughs> there we go. And so you can see that's really darkened and made a lot moodier, those edges there. And we can drag this around and reposition it so that if we wanna bring back the highlights in certain areas, but that's just really accentuating this central column of light going on. Now I'm also gonna dial down the whites for just a little bit more nuance. Take that down to negative 30. And then one thing that I'm gonna do just to sort of soften out these edges and take a little bit of the detail away, because I like the detail that we're getting here in the center, but just to kind of kill what's happening on the edges is to take down our clarity. I'm just gonna take it down a little bit just to soften it. If you take it too far, like it starts to look like glamour shots, like circa 1992, <laughs> but we don't want that. Uh, but just a little bit, just to soften it out. Because again, whenever we're working on an image, we have to think about where do we want the viewer's eyes to go? Where do we want to direct them? And how can I use light and shadow and texture and tone and clarity and all these different tools in order to drive the eyes where we want them to go? And for me, that's here in the center of this image. This is definitely more of an abstract image, but a place where the eyes can enjoy the lines that are going on and sort of explore it and see all the unique details. And so that is our edit. So let's go ahead and do the very fun before and after, right? We really kind of transform this image in some unique ways. Now, of course, there's also a lot of little like goobers and things that we can come in here with the healing brush and just heal these little spots and clean that up. Or you could take it over into Photoshop and do likewise the same over there. You've got a lot of options. Or if you kind of like that more rustic vibe with the imperfections in it, you leave those just as they are. And so that is the edit from start to finish. Now, of course, you also have the preset. So all of those settings are baked into that preset. You can apply that to other images, play with it, understand how those different tools impact the way the image looks. But in the meantime, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe. I will be back very soon with another video. We're gonna continue in on this series, shooting with the cheap camera, cause y'all seem to enjoy that. So more on that next time, but otherwise you stay out of trouble. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.